Hello, everyone. So welcome to Less Code, More Power. So this time we have a guest. We have Tomas on the show, and he's going to be showing us some amazing uh, pro code and low code tools. So stay tuned. Good morning. Welcome back to Less Code, More Power. Now that Sarah and I know how to talk to each other via this cool remote setup, we decided it's time for guests. Please welcome our very first remote guest, Tomas. He's right now in Poland. Tomas, do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, hi. My name is Tomasz Poszytek. I'm from Warsaw, Poland. I'm Business Applications VP, and I'm working with Power Platform for nearly four years and with Microsoft products for over 10 and I'm really, really glad to be here and share my knowledge and my experience with all of you. I love that. So, Sarah, what do you, Sarah, we've got some hard questions for Tomas today, don't we? Yes, yeah, super. Yeah, like the epic, epically hard questions. I mean, we're so excited because this, what you're going to be talking about, Tomas, is all about, it's kind of, it's very uh, pro-dev. Uh, but it's also, it's using Power Automate. And I think these are some of the best demonstrations because they bring something that's quite technical and they actually bring it with that low code approach. And so we're super excited to have you on the show. So thank you so much for, for spending time to be with us today. And thank you very much for having me here. Awesome. So tell, us, tell us, Tomas, a little bit about your journey, about how you got into Power Platform in the first place. And then we're going to have you show us a sweet demo you've brought. Oh, well, it's it's not a demo, actually. It's a working product. I mean, solution. A working um, product. <laughs> yeah. So about my, my journey, well, I was starting, I started my, my journey with processes and uh, well, in business applications far before Power Platform history. Uh, I was working previously with SharePoint Designer. I was working previously, and I still do, with Nintex processes and, and forms. And once I acknowledged there is, there is a Power Automate, well, flow back then, and I, I tried the first runs, and apparently it worked quite fine. It was very easy for adoption, at, at least for me. And then I tried Power Apps like a year later, and my first experience was, oh, no, that's nothing I'm gonna use ever. It's so difficult. This is something I will never adopt. It's, it's just too complex. It's nothing for Power users. Uh, but like two years later, a customer asked me about uh, how to, to create a project using Power Apps, and I somehow just jumped into it and it was, okay, fine, it's working, I can do that. But uh, yeah, the first, the first experience was quite hard. And about the solution that I want to show you, uh, it's actually my productive solution. Because one day I realized that I'm, as most of us possibly, running their own businesses. Uh, receiving invoices monthly from the same vendors over and over again. And I was asked by my accountancy that every time I have this invoice, I don't, I, they didn't want me to just store it and then print it by the end of the month and then send them in, in a bulk, but they just wanted to have them at a hawk. So in the beginning, you know, I mean, in the first days, I mean, someone, sometime in the beginning, I was just forwarding every email with every invoice I was receiving. And then I thought, hey, maybe there is a better way to do that. And then I discovered Louis, which is Language Understanding Intelligence Service. Oh. And I thought, all right, maybe this intelligent understanding service can understand which of the emails that I'm receiving actually contains an invoice or a billing or whatever. And then automatically or automatically, as I prefer to say, forward this email to my accountancy. And so I build a flow that is triggered every time there is a new email with an attachment. Then uh, Luis is being engaged to um, identify if this email actually contains data that is an invoice. And then I also recently added Power BI, sorry, AI Builder. <laughs> <laughs> because I have like five or six vendors that I'm regularly uh, receiving the invoices. So the AI builder is simply recognizing the, the invoice and is getting out of the most important data, uh, like the due date, the payment date, uh, the total value, um, the invoice number, and some other. And then it's simply putting all together in a fancy looking email and is saving it into an Excel file that is my kind of a registry. And 
doing some other things. So let me maybe just show it how it how it works. Please do. This sounds fascinating, Sarah. I'm it does. Feel totally this for other uses. The thing that I really like about this is like it isn't just uh, kind of taking stuff from an email body. It's actually kind of going into an actual attachment, and then it's actually kind of then bringing. Uh, it's actually like like you said, like kind of identifying certain areas of information. Then also, mm -hmm. you said that you're using Excel to kind of almost create your registry, right? And then so you have your own record of it. It's not just forwarding an email and you not actually getting any benefit from it. It feels right. like you've set this up so that you get benefit from this as well as then you're saving the time then having to then send this email on to your accountants. Actually, yes. So the idea here is that this flow is triggered every time there is a mail with an, with an attachment, actually. Now, pretty slowed. Oh, and I'm also using this fancy and very useful try-catch pattern so that if this flow fails, I'm as well receiving a notification that something went wrong. But then it is also trying to, I mean, the first step is to check if this attachment actually is a PDF or an image, because sometimes these are scans. So to prevent this flow to actually uh, engage Louis, if this is like an ECS attachment or any other kind of attachments that I'm not expecting to be at least uh, invoices. Um, and then I'm constructing a body, I mean, a text out of the email contents and title that is then being sent to, to Luis. And Luis actually is having um, this one intent that is having all the, well, bodies from, from, the, uh, from the previous emails that I'm using to, that I used to learn, I mean, to, to train it. And there are also entities in those, in those uh, intents that are being identified and based on, on them, um, those bodies, or, I mean, this text from, from email is actually being then uh, analyzed against those intents and uh, if, if, it's, if it is matching the intent invoices or not. And once this prediction is calculated, then what the flow is doing is actually checking if this uh, prediction value, this is um, how it's called, con Con, 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 con. Ah, I lost the word, whatever. So, it's, oh, condition. Uh, I mean, condition, yes, but, uh, you know, how much, how much uh, sure it is that it's, it's an invoice or not. Oh, so anyway, like confidence, confidence, right. Okay. Confidence, yes, thank you very much. So, yeah. if the confidence is above uh, 90%, then it's just automatically sending me notification here there is a new email with the email. And then, if this confidence is below uh, 90%, I mean, if it's between 70 and 90%, then what the flow is doing is actually assigning me a task and asking me, hey, is it an, an, an email with attachment uh, that, with an invoice or not? And then if I say, yes, this is an attachment with an invoice, then what, uh, what the flow is doing is actually adding these contents from that email as a new intent and is training the Louis so that the next time ah. the same email is coming with, from the same vendor, then it should be aware that, okay, this is an invoice and just go beyond 90%. I think and that's my favorite part of this, right? Like, like being able to take that out and like you're actually helping Lewis uh, like learn, uh, which is kind of the whole point of, of um, like machine learning and, and that kind of type of learning. But then the, the cool thing is, is about assigning like kind of that approval piece, right? That task of saying, we're not quite sure, like kind of you set this boundary to say, you know, it could be, uh, especially something new, mm -hmm. and then you're giving it the opportunity to to not just go ahead and because that's the that's the drawback of using this kind of technology is that you know if you have black and white kind of thinking, then you know you could actually be missing quite a lot of stuff. Correct. Yeah. Well, there is more. Really so if, like I, if I re if I reject what I like about this, Tomas, is that you took just a basic functionality. You took Lewis. And you're actually able to shorten the time it takes to do your process going forward. Yeah. yeah. Because this is not like, oh, you run the same process every day. It will shorten the time. Just the more it, you do business with someone, the better that experience is for them. The, the, so the point is that I'm actually not doing this manually anymore. Yeah, that's right. And lastly, so once this confidence is high or if I approve a task, then what yeah. the flow is actually doing is then checking if, uh, I mean, 
is trying to process the invoice. So he's calling the child flow, which is actually, where are you? Which is actually just uh, trying to, to use the proper AI builder model based on one of the commonly, uh, yeah, I mean, one of the vendors that is most, uh, most common, most uh, often sending me invoices. And then based yeah. on that is actually trying to get data out of this out of this invoice. So this is like the due date. Uh, yeah, there are some values getting out. So like the, the due date, there is also a transaction date, a total value description, NIP number, uh, invoice number and other things. And all this information is then being returned to the main flow that is actually as I said, creating this new entry in my uh, Excel file that is my register repository with all the information about the invoice and the data from the invoice, if, if there is a matching uh, model in the, in the AI builder, is forwarding the email to my accountancy and it's mm -hmm. also storing, I mean, the first place was, uh, the first step was that it's storing this attachment in my OneDrive, again, in the folder related to the current month. So it's just building an archive of my of my invoices and it's also building this uh, kind of a of a registry and I was also thinking about setting myself a task to remind me hey your due date is just like tomorrow so maybe consider paying this invoice already mm -hmm. and and well and it's working quite fine sometimes sometimes an email that is not actually an invoice email being sent to my accountancy but that's happening rarely really yeah, that's amazing. This I is like the other thing that I really like is that taxonomy you're creating as well with your OneDrive. Like kind of again, that's the kind of like hidden thing there that you're again not just getting a benefit from the Excel, like kind of having your your own kind of like uh, file, but you're also actually creating your own taxonomy from like you know very simple, just like storing it by month and stuff and things like mm -hmm. that. Again, it's just saving you time. Yeah, they and I bet your accountancy really loves this. <laughs> Well, yes, at least they are receiving the invoices at hoc, so they don't have to wait until the end of the month. So they can just mm -hmm. process them at hoc and simply do their work faster as well. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions I had, Thomas, in terms of, you know, you said at the beginning of the show that, you know, you kind of found, you were kind of excited, but then with, especially with power apps and, and that kind of stuff, you were like, hell no, like, I'm not going to be mm -hmm. going to that kind of stuff. You know, that kind of mindset when you first kind of like it like saw Power Automate and Power Apps and stuff to where you are now, what would you like tell yourself kind of, what would you tell your previous self, like kind of knowing all the things that you know now? Um, well, not to be frightened in the first place by things that look scary. Mm -hmm. So... I, I think that maybe there was just not enough of determination to go deeper into, into the new technology. So that would be definitely a thing. So like yeah. recently I, I started playing around the, with the UI flows and other RPA tools that I have never ever touched before. And it was like, okay, let's do it. Oh, very good. You, but, RPA but, you say. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. what is also important about, about this technology, about the power apps uh, especially, um, is that in the very, very beginning, when anyone wanted to try Power Apps, there was just no community at all around. There was no internet. So that when I was in doubt, when I was having any issues, I was just all alone. And today we have a very strong and a huge community. So whenever we have, or at least I, I think this way, whenever I have an issue, whenever I have a problem, and I just post this, this question, this issue to the Google or or Bing, <laughs> yeah. there is usually someone or posts or, or, or um, comments on our forums uh, of people who were there before and their answers and solutions provided. So now whenever we have problems, issues with the platform, there is a lot of, pla there are a lot of places where we can actually look for help and find a solution, someone to help us. So it's much, much easier today to to adopt these new new tool the power platform and as, as, a, as a tool set toolkit absolutely what I like about that what you're saying is with the the products actually became better because of the community 
right? Where the community said, we need the, these products to be easier to use, we need them to be easier to learn, and we need them to be a little more customizable and expandable and extendable through all of these other things. And that's why we at Microsoft care so much about community feedback because we don't actually know what people need. We have no idea, right? We don't have a job like yours. We don't have a job like teachers. We don't have a job like people who work in all kinds of other businesses. So we need feedback from people like you saying, you know, these invoices come very slowly one at a time, and it's very annoying for accountants to receive them at the end of the month in a batch. So how can we actually figure out how they can see an invoice, get it approved, learn, train the model, and then they proceed to the next step as soon as possible. So it's so, so important to give feedback on products. And every question you ask is feedback on products, right? Every question is saying, I didn't quite get how to use that. And if someone so intelligent like you doesn't can't figure it out, most of the world can't figure it out. Yep. So yeah, thank you for all of the feedback you've given and all of the work you're doing. This is fantastic. Hey, it's a pleasure, to be honest. Awesome. It's such a and, cool demo, um, though. That's the thing. Kind of like, it goes back to that whole, like, kind of, you know, you saw, like, kind of, you know, AI builder and all this kind of stuff that kind of all just melds together in a single solution. That's the thing that I love about. So for all of you out there, Tomas actually has an amazing arsenal of documentation. He's got this fantastic blog where he shares tons of tips, tons of advice. He has this great post on what is a citizen developer even. And it was one of the first things I read when I was learning about the platform. And I found it so enlightening to learn about the community, the mindset, the problems, the solutions they're looking for. So thank you, Tomas, for being such a good documenter of your journey because you saved people. And I mean, when I say people, I mean me. You saved me years of research and trial and error and going down the wrong path because you've kind of documented the pitfalls you've fallen into and the things that did work. So we could bypass all of the things that did not work, get to what work, and then continue to build on top of that. Oh so, yeah, thank 100 you. Testament that, thank Donna. You. Um, you have some really good Power Virtual Agent documentation as well that's really helped me in the past. So that's something that, that's definitely come up for me too. So I am definitely a reader of your blog. It's, it's very good, easy to read as well. Like that's, the, that's the really nice thing. It just comes up, you get the information you need, and then people can go ahead and continue. And, and like the stress just immediately goes away. That's like you said, the community is great for that. Um, we ask all of our guests to assign homework to our audience. Ooh, we love homework. We love homework. So what would you like to volunteer everyone to do? All right. So um, I bet everyone from us, I mean, every, everyone who is watching now this, uh, this podcast is having their own processes that we are executing in, I mean, using computers. Like I had mine with, with invoices. Maybe some of you have your own with, with your regular process that you just face in the real world and in your just personal lives. Now think of these processes and pick one and think if you can automate it using power, you can automate it, you can try to automate it using single single uh, process, maybe you, you can automate it using the whole Power Platform tools and engaging Power Apps as well to maybe build an interface. So your homework is actually, think of these processes that you're facing in your life, pick one, and try to make it more efficient using Power Platform and tools you can find in the Office 365 and whereabouts. That's a homework. And that. That's great. And once you do it, I'd love mm -hmm. to learn what you did so you can DM me on Twitter or whenever else, wherever else, and I'd love to learn what you, what you did. Okay, cool. audience, you heard that. Automate an annoying process in your life, and you've got a lot of annoying processes. Automate one. <laughs> DM Tomas, let him know what you did, and exchange notes on what you tried, what he's tried, how you can make all this better. Because you will only get better by hanging out with experts, right? It's the yeah. best way to get real good at what you do. Hang out with people who know more than you. So I totally agree with that, Donna. So go ahead. So all of Thomas's details are going to be in the description uh, for, for today's show. So go ahead, take a look, uh, take a look down there and uh, grab his details. So to his Twitter, his LinkedIn, so you can go ahead, there's got to be no excuse for you to go ahead and be part of this community. So yeah, we want you here. Yep. And of course, we're way over time because it's us. 
and 15 minutes is optional. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for joining us for our first remote show of Less Code, More Power with a guest. Right. And it wasn't a total fiasco, and I think it went quite well. It was fine. Right? Yeah, I, I, I like it. It, it was, <laughs> it was <amazing>. yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, Till next time, I'm the Fox. The I, I'm and, Thomas. And he's Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> we need to find him a woodland animal, obviously. We'll see you next time. Less code, more power. <laughs>